Hey Pew Crew, welcome back. When you think about a trip to Universal Orlando, you probably think about all the good times you're going to have and all the memories you're going to make. Because the fact is, you are going to make memories. Now, whether those are good memories or bad memories, that's to be determined. Not all trips can be full of sunshine and rainbows. There are plenty of things you can do to ruin a vacation, like forgetting to book a hotel room. So what we're going to do in today's video is talk about five things that will ruin your universal vacation and how to avoid them. The first thing that can ruin your Universal vacation is forgetting to pack what you need for the day. Universal, in comparison to other theme parks, has a relatively small property, but it's still a little bit of a trek to get all the way back to your on-site hotel, and even more of one if you're staying off-site. Who wants to waste all that time, and even worse, those precious steps walking all the way back to your hotel, getting whatever you forgot, and then walking all the way back to the parks? And what might be even worse than wasting time and and steps. If you forget something and have to buy a replacement in the parks, you can guarantee that you are going to pay a premium for that item. Universal has some of the most expensive sunscreen I have ever seen. And you're probably wondering what are some things that you should take to the parks. Our essentials have changed over the years, but some of the things that we always bring that a lot of people overlook are things like an extra pair of socks. You also want to have like a portable phone charger in case your phone dies, as well as some snacks to hold you over between meals. You also want to make sure that you have any medications that you need throughout the day. We always make sure to have like pain medicine in case one of us gets a headache from one of the roller coasters. We also usually pack anti-nausea medicine in case Tyler gets motion sickness from any of the rides. 60% of the time, the Simpsons ride gets me every time. You also need to think about what kind of bag you're going to carry all your stuff in. It seems like fanny packs are the go-to these days. Theme park bags are kind of like porridge. There's some that are just too big, there's some that are too small, there's some that are too hot, there's some that will just chafe your arms. But then the magical thing happens and you find one that's just right. You need to make sure that whatever bag you bring with you to the parks is going to be comfortable. I actually used to bring this fanny pack with me to the parks, <laughs> but it was so big and we packed so much stuff in yeah. it that it literally caused my back to hurt. We like put freestyle cups, we had cell phones, like, I mean, full wallets in there. Like it was- it Giant was sunscreen things. Yeah, it was huge. <laughs> you also wanna make sure if you have a backpack that the shoulder straps are good and comfortable. You wanna make sure that you're not gonna like rub your arms raw, cause yep. that's gonna be miserable too. But this brings us to our next point, which is packing too much. Universal really doesn't put a limit on how much you can bring with you into the parks. We have literally rolled full-size soup cases in before and checked them at Lost and Found. Uh, disclaimer, <laughs> don't do that. No. And we do not recommend doing it unless it is an absolute emergency and you just have to. Like I said at the beginning of the video, sometimes someone, not pointing any fingers, forgets to book a hotel room. <laughs> Packing too much is absolutely a hassle. We can tell you that from experience. Oh, yeah. And one of the worst parts is that there are certain attractions that when you ride them, you have to put all of your things into lockers. So if you have a ton of stuff, it's gonna take you forever to get everything situated. And you're gonna have to do that every single time you wanna ride one of these attractions. This hits all too close to home anymore when we go to the parks. We have so much stuff. Uh, we have like the camera, and then we have a backpack with all the accessories for the camera. And then in that backpack, there's padded insert to put the camera in. <laughs> and then awkwardly, those won't both fit into one locker. So you have to pull that insert out and put it into its own locker. <laughs> and then Anna over here generally has a backpack or a fanny pack as well. So yeah, we all the time are having to get like three lockers. And yes, we know we're jerks. We, we apologize in advance. If you haven't been behind us when we're trying to get lockers, you will be any time now because we're there <laughs> enough that we're gonna inconvenience you. And we are sorry, you don't have to give us like dirty looks or anything like that. We know, we're trying, but, but we know. Which brings us to a pro tip. You can get more than one locker. Uh, we see a lot of people that have like two things that would definitely fit in two lockers and then they pay money for one of the bigger lockers yeah. when you don't have to do that. You could like, she can get one, I can get one. Or if you have like an express pass and a hotel room key or hotel room key and an annual pass, you can get multiple lockers. And having to do that 
just over and over again in the parks, it wastes a lot of time. So it makes your days kind of unenjoyable. Not unenjoyable, but it's hard to get to a rhythm and just go with the flow in the park when you're having to pull 15 things out of the locker <laughs> every time that you go there. So yeah, just pack as little as possible. But if you do have some larger items that you have to have with you in the parks, but that you don't necessarily need with you all day, yeah, like, like maybe... You with me? <laughs> like you don't need me all day. I was thinking like a diaper bag or like a lunch box that you, that you just need like once or twice throughout the day. You'll want to make sure that you think about those large lockers yeah. at the front of both Universal Studios and Islands of Adventure. We were actually shocked to find out that those start at just like $10 per day. So if you do have some larger items that you have to carry with you, you'll definitely want to keep those in mind. The next thing that will ruin your Universal vacation is buying the wrong tickets to the parks. Now that probably seems fairly obvious, but Universal offers a lot of different tickets. And if you've been on their website lately, you've seen just how many ticketing options there are. We've heard a lot of stories about people purchasing tickets for the wrong dates. Now that Universal sells dated tickets or even not understanding the difference between a base ticket and a park to park ticket and missing out on one of the parks entirely, or even worse, the Hogwarts Express. Right about now, some of you are like opening up other tabs, running downstairs to grab your purse, just to make sure that you've got the right ticket. If you're panicking, don't worry, stop panicking. It's not that big of a deal. Universal will gladly help you out as long as it hasn't been activated. Now, unfortunately, you will have to call. Like, this isn't something you can fix online. You do have to call and talk with one of the team members to get everything fixed. But as long as, like I said, you haven't activated the ticket or used it for anything else, Universal is very good about allowing you to reallocate funds or whatever just to fix a problem and get the ticket that you need. If you're still in the process of trying to figure out which ticket is best for your trip to Universal, don't worry either. We just put out a video talking about all of the different ticketing options to all three of Universal's parks. And we talk about what you need to think about when trying to figure out which ticket is best for you. And we also give you our best money saving tips and tricks. So we'll put a link to that in the description down below. The next thing that can ruin your Universal vacation is paying more than you have to for your trip. Yeah. We hear people talk all the time about how expensive Universal is, and while they're definitely not wrong, there are a lot of ways to save yourself some money. Yeah, we get comments and then just people in person ask us like, how do we afford to take these three, four, five thousand dollar trips six times a year? And it's like, yeah, we, we don't. We don't take <laughs> any $4,000 trips a year. Like no. that zero is how many we take. So yeah, there are ways to make it way more affordable than what some people have in their mind. What a lot of people do that they don't realize is costing them more money than is necessary is they wait until they get to the parks to purchase tickets. The problem with this is that buying tickets at the gate, they can be up to 20% more expensive than if you purchase them online ahead of time. And on top of this, the lines at the gate can get ridiculous. So not only are you gonna pay more money than you should for your tickets, you're also gonna waste some of your precious time at the parks. We also see people making mistakes like staying off site and having to Uber to the parks every day or purchasing a multi-park ticket to Universal without even considering an annual pass. Did you know that Universal's seasonal pass is about the same price as a three day two park ticket? And the seasonal pass includes entrance to the parks for an entire year. Plus it comes with awesome benefits like discounts on Universal's hotel and even discounts on other events like HHN. But the big biggest mistake that can literally cost you thousands of dollars is buying individual express passes for everyone in your group instead of just staying at a premier resort which includes those unlimited express passes with your room. We do have a bonus mistake that we wanted to mention. This one won't necessarily ruin your vacation, but it could put a damper on it and that's forgetting to make reservations at your favorite restaurant. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are you saying like we wouldn't get to eat it like cowfish yeah. on a trip? Yeah. Okay. So in today's video, we're going to talk <laughs> about the top six things that will ruin your vacation. <laughs> okay. Apparently not eating a cowfish will ruin Tyler's vacation. <laughs> 
Uh, but this is something that has changed in the last year or so. This didn't really used to be an issue, but we have definitely seen like a decrease in the available seating yes. at the sit down restaurants, specifically inside of CityWalk. Now we should mention that this doesn't apply to all of the restaurants. No. Not all of them take reservations. Like I know Bubba Gump's does it, and I'm sure there are a few others, but restaurants like Cowfish or Vivo's, if you're wanting to eat at those, you do have to have reservations now, and you can make those up to six months in advance on Universal's website. So there's no point not to make those, but if you do get to the parks and realize that you didn't make reservations for your favorite restaurant, you can always make sure to check the bar to see if you get lucky and they have any open seating. If you're enjoying this video, if you would give us a thumbs up. We talk about all things theme parks here. So if that's something you're interested in, you can hit that subscribe button as well. The last thing that can ruin your universal vacation is pushing yourself too hard. And we are absolutely guilty of this oh, yeah. ourselves. We always want to do and see everything at the parks and we end up suffering because of it. So you want to make sure that you slow down and you take some breaks while you're there. The theme parks are a great place to sit down and people watch. There are some incredible sit down restaurants that are absolutely worth taking the time to enjoy. And plus, who wouldn't want to take a midday pool break instead of sweating to death in the Florida heat? A few other tips about pushing yourself too hard is you're going to want to be comfortable and that includes your clothes and your shoes. Yeah. Probably more importantly, your shoes. You're going to be walking a ton in the parks. If you've never been to Universal, like whatever you're thinking in your head, just double that. That's probably pretty close. We have plenty of days where we walk in excess of 40,000 steps Oof. and it's never fun. So that means you really want to think about what you're putting on your feet that morning. Um, we see people in like the flip flops that go between your toes. And I know some of you are sitting there right now like, hey, that's what I wear. And you're going to be in the comments like, I wear those and my feet are fine. And to that, I say that you are a robot. <laughs> you don't have real skin on your feet. Also, new shoes. See people in like some nice new shoes every time we're in the parks. All I will say is, I know you want to look good, but what looks better? Walking in some old beat up shoes or crawling in some brand new ones. One last tip about taking care of yourselves in the parks is you want to make sure that you drink plenty of fluids yeah. throughout the day. Universal will actually give you free water from any of the little food and drink kiosks. The ones with the fountain drinks that is, they're not going to give you like a free bottle of mm -hmm. water, but if you have your own bottle, you can fill that up for free at any of the Coke Freestyle machines as well. Yeah, it's definitely important to stay hydrated, especially in the summer months. Like it gets brutally hot. Yeah. But even in like the winter months, like December, January, February, it gets hot still. It's central Florida. We've been down there when it's been like 85 in January. So when people ask us like, hey, what's, what's the weather going to be like January, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, it could be 55 and it could be 90. Like just... Just always expect it to be hot. But if you do start feeling dehydrated when you're down there or have any other kind of health issues, Universal does have med services in both parks and that is up towards the front of the park. So you can head up there and they will be more than happy to help you out. If you enjoyed these tips and you're looking for more ways to save some money on your Universal vacation, you've come to the right place. We have videos over everything from crowd levels to express passes, the best times to visit the parks and more. And if you have a question about your upcoming trip that we haven't answered anywhere, leave those down below and we'll be happy to help you with them. All right, guys, that wraps up today's video. Leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know, who do you think forgot to book that hotel room? <laughs> If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. You can hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell notification so you get an alert every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching. I will never tell. <laughs>